Is there any sound on, on this film that was like a particular stickler? Where, mm. you know, any of the creatures or... Uh, you know, everything... I mean, obviously we're in the footsteps of a, a legacy of a, of a show, and I've worked on a lot of Star Wars films. I did the prequels. I remastered episodes four, five, and six for George when I was younger, and then uh, I've worked on the current film, so I have this connection to the, the saga that I'm trying to keep everything in the same zone. But um, I think the challenges on Last Jedi were uh, the communication between the two lead characters, Kylo Ren and, and Rey, and we had the, uh, Snoke sort of connects them over the Force, and we wanted to have them feel uh, connected over this expanse of space, and we did that by sort of a lot of elimination of sound and making it very pronounced on their dialogue and having this sort of reverberant, kind of reverse reverb thing that was very intimate there. So that their scenes, a lot of the Ray scenes when she's in the, the mirror cave having those moments in the force, uh, we did the same kind of thing there and just really bring it in close to what she's doing when Holdo, Laura Dern's character, sacrifices herself into the First Order ships. We actually removed all sound for a very long period of time there to the point where movie theaters actually put out a message saying that that was intentional because <laughs> people were saying what, what happened. But it was really effective to have the sound completely go away and then come back in this moment of this very unusual explosion that we put a Formula One racer car sound through to make this like kind of, you know, in the middle of the whole thing. Um, but just a lot, Brian Johnson was just open to a lot of this and wanted to really experiment and play. And he's, you know, he wrote and directed the films. It was very personal to him. And he was with us the entire mix uh, all through editorial, and he was just—he loved sound. So he come. People, most people come to Skywalker because they love sound, which is great. That that right off the bat, it's not a technical process. It's a, it's an artistry, that um, that, that people uh, enjoy when they come there. But now you you kind of mentioned casually working on four, five, and six. Yeah. But so basically, you've worked on every Star Wars movie. Yeah, at four, five, and six, I experienced as a child, as a fan, and then in '97 we put them out in the theaters again, and then we 2004 for DVD in 2011. But yeah, I, I did all that. And yeah, so and, I have, yeah. And uh, number nine. Uh, number nine will be out next Christmas. Yeah. And can you tell us some, a couple of? Plot, oh yeah, everyone plot dies. Secrets? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. No, uh. Uh, <laughs> I, know, I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. I mean, that's J.J. Abrams and Bad Robot uh, are coming with the, up with a story with our story group at Lucasfilm. And then as soon as he has a script together, he'll he'll give us the pitch. But uh, right now, currently, I'm working on the Han Solo film. It's a it's a spinoff, kind of similar to the way Rogue One was. It's not connected to the Skywalker story. It's its own thing. And Ron Howard's directing that. And we're we're deep in post production right now. And that opens May. That comes out in May. We just our trailer just came out uh, for the Super Bowl. And, Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah, but once again, Ron Howard has had a long history with Lucasfilm, and he's super excited to be part of Star Wars, and we're, we'd love to have him. Okay, so, I, I mean, I don't know what this... I mean, you, you love your job, you're, you're great at it, and now you're an Oscar nominee on top it's of it. It's pretty crazy, yeah. It's, it's pretty great. Yeah, yeah uh, thank you.